Hi, this is Sam McGuire, and we're going to be talking about noise reduction for audio. We're going to be working inside Final Cut Pro with this, and also using another application that comes with Final Cut, and that's Soundtrack Pro. Now, if you're working inside Final Cut, it doesn't really have many noise reduction type tools. It has a couple different audio effects which you can use for certain things, and one of these is the actual... Let's see, right in here, Final Cut Pro, we have the vocal deep hopper, the vocal de and we also have hum remover. So this removes hum, say you're in a room that has lights that have hum coming off of them, or if the vocal is, has a lot of S in it, you can remove that here, or pops. So if you have a plosive from a P sound, or there's a couple of letters which do the same thing. So those are the real three types of noise reduction according to Final Cut Pro. We're not talking about these three, although hum removal could be a part of this. We're going to talk about other types of noise that are out there. Now, if you are using a handheld camera and the mic is on board with that, you're not using a separate audio system, you may have to use the hum remover to get rid of some of the low rumble that comes from just using that type of microphone and having a motor or other types of fans active on the camera. Instead, we're going to be talking about some outdoor noise in this case. In this particular little amateur clip, let me play a little bit. Back in. Back in. Back in. There's going to be some wind, and there's also a, basically a fountain in the background, which you can see if we go back earlier in this. Possibly. Yeah, there's the fountain. And so we have two real distinct noise sources. One of them slightly more consistent, this fountain here. Even though there's a bunch of water coming off in different places, the overall sound of a fountain is pretty consistent. However, the wind is a non-consistent noise. So let's go into Soundtrack Pro. I'm going to right click on this and we're going to send to Soundtrack Pro Audio File Project. And we have two options here. We could do it Soundtrack Pro Multi-Track Project, is, which is if you have a big sequence here with a lot of clips on it, it'll take it all in there, just as if you were using an OMF file. Or we can just do individual clips, and that's what we're going to do here. We also have the ability to do some scripts, which allows us, if you're doing the same kind of noise reduction on a bunch of different clips, to set up a script and do it that way. But let's just do this for now. And it'll open up in Soundtrack Pro. Video comes right in, the audio comes in. Soundtrack Pro, if you haven't used it, we're not gonna go over the real details on this program right now, except to show you what you need for noise reduction. So for instance, here at the end, we can zoom in. We need to find, first and foremost, a place where there's some consistent noise with nothing else. So here there's a lot of stuff going on. Now this can be a very short little segment. We can do a click, drag, and release to find a place, and we'll push play, and it'll cycle through that automatically. And if you hear a lot of kind of metallic sounds, then you're probably not gonna have the best place. What we're listening for is a place that just has noise all by itself. One of these may have to work because of all the stuff going on. But that's the sound of that little segment just being repeated over and over and over. Yeah, we're going to need to find a different place. So we come over here to Process Menu, Noise Reduction, Set Noise Print. So this takes a fingerprint of the noise and allows us then to actually use that to remove noise over a larger section. Process, we go back here once we have that set noise print done, and we go to reduce noise. This brings up this dialog, which has a couple different parameters, a noise threshold that tells us where to set it so that the noise is being reduced, but the things you wanna keep aren't. This reduction tells how much to reduce. 100% means everything below the noise threshold that matches the noise print will be reduced, and we could do some different variety of that. Tone control is going to preserve you the treble or the bass. So if you have some dialogue you really need to hear, you may go more 
this way. If you're really preserving sound effects or something that's more low frequency, you could go that way. And then we can push play to start previewing it, adjust the level. We can also bypass the effect, turn it on or turn it off. And then we can listen just to the noise that's being removed. And that'll come in handy as well. So let's push play and I'm gonna adjust the threshold to where it's removing things. And then I'm gonna go back and forth with the noise only to hear what's going on. Hey, Hannah, are you cold? Okay, so you can hear what's going on. When I do a lot of noise reduction, you hear a lot of artifacts, but the noise is being reduced. I think what we need to find is a place where we can get a little bit more consistent reading here, and some of the stuff where we're looking at there isn't necessarily the right place. However, you gotta be careful. As the camera moves further away from the fountain or closer to the fountain, the noise is going to change, and so you actually may have to split this up into different sections as you're doing this. Or you can find one that's decent for it and, and run with it instead of trying to find a whole bunch of different ones. It just depends on really what the end quality or the end goal is for the quality of your sound. If you need this to be perfect cinematic sound, this type of sound you're going to have to replace. And for this type of video, it's probably not worth it. However, you may be able to remove noise around certain parts of the dialogue and make it easier to understand, which is usually the goal. Let's listen here to this area, see if this noise is better. Let's do a little longer section. And it's still pretty hard to hear. That may be a better section for this. So right in here, we're going to set this as the print. Reduce noise, preview. Hey Hannah, are you cold? So you can hear less artifacting because we got a cleaner sample. The goal would be to find the best sample place. But you can hear all that wind noise is still there. And that's not going to change with what we're doing because this is removing consistent noise that stays constant over time and that wind comes and goes and so there's very little we can do with a noise reduction tool to help that. Let's try one other area later on. Hey, Hannah, are you cold? Are those pretty flowers? So what I would probably do in this case is actually do a passive noise reduction and then maybe use an equalizer as well to pull out some of those high hissing things that are still there. So using this in conjunction with other things. Let me show you what this looks like once that's removed. You'll see a difference visually. We're losing some of the things that are actually said, but we're losing a lot of the noise as well. Push play. Apart from the wind, we actually have a lot more intelligibility here. So if you were shooting this, say, as a wedding video, which it really is, this is one of those informal cameras that they pass out to the audience and you want people to hear what's going on, then you could do this type of noise reduction just to improve intelligibility. The wind, people aren't gonna care about as much because of the nature of the video. So they're gonna see, oh, it was a really windy day. Oh yeah, I remember that. And they're not gonna care as much. Now, once you have it done, it shows up here in the actions list. We can turn it off by deselecting the arrow. Okay. 
and turn it back on. We can also, if we were to do some other effects here, like an equalizer, You can see that EQ actually helped quite a bit with the high frequencies. Now in the actions list, just as you would hope, you can change the order of these things. You can turn off the noise, leave the EQ on, and do a lot of testing to make sure that what you're doing is actually improving the sound and not hurting it. Okay, so that's noise reduction in Soundtrack Pro. Once we're done, all we do is save. Once we click OK, it'll save this. We can close it come back in here and you'll see now when we push play hey Hannah are you cool? that it actually is referencing those changes it comes back in as an update of that project so if we wanted to we can come back in here, send back to soundtrack, audio file project. This stuff is still here. We can change these at any point. Save it again. Okay. Close. And in Final Cut, it will update those changes. If we ever need to get back to the original, you could do it by going back into there and just turning all those things off. Quick render. And we're back to the really hard to understand audio, even though the noise reduced version still has all the wind in it. Okay, so this has been a look at noise reduction. We talked about some of the basic tools in Final Cut Pro. We looked at getting it into Soundtrack Pro and running the actual noise reduction tool there, working a little bit with an equalizer, saving it to get it back into Final Cut Pro and how that updated, and then going back and forth as needed. Okay, good luck.